this looks good. So before you start your talk, let me give a quick introduction, make a quick introduction for you. So Professor Xiao Gangwen is a prominent figure in the condensed matter theory group in MIT. In particular, he is Cecil and Ida Green Professor of Physics, and he has many research interests, but some of it includes topological and quantum order, high temperature superconductors, and origin and unification of elementary particles. Uh, today's talk will be about his last interest, I'm guessing, uh, and it's called Unification of Elementary Particles and Fundamental Forces via Quantum Information. So screen is yours, Professor Wen. Um, Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Also, can you see my cursor? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I really like to thank organizer for organizing such an interesting uh, uh, meeting. You know, many, many aspects of fundamental physics is uh, touched uh, in this uh, meeting. And uh, uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, actually a topic in condensed matter physics. Uh, despite the, the, the title. Uh, so it, actually you will see that uh, uh, even in condensed matter physics, which is uh, viewed as applied physics, uh, some fundamental physics question uh, can be uh, uh, touched. Okay, so, uh, so let's uh, ask a question. How do we gain a deeper understanding of our world? You know, our world is very rich, have a lot of uh, phenomena. How to gain this deeper understanding? It turns out that uh, our understanding is a, a deep understanding is obtained through the cycle of discovery and the unification and the more discovery and the more unification. So, uh, uh, so in the discovery phase, we just collect a lot of experimental fact. Then we are overwhelmed by those experimental fact. Then we want to have a theory to unify, to have an understanding of those experimental facts. And uh, so through this cycle, we just gain a deeper and deeper understanding of our universe. And uh, each big un unification can be viewed as a revolution in physics. And uh, for those uh, deep, uh, deep revolution, uh, actually it turns out that uh, uh, we may have a new worldview. You know, uh, many fundamental concepts are changed. Uh, even the language is changed, okay. And uh, uh, most time we also need to introduce new mathematics to describe the, the new world. So the first uh, uh, revolution is, uh, we can say it's a mechanical revolution. Uh, in that case, the unify the falling apple on the earth and the planet motion on the sky. And then the world view at that time is that all matter are formed by collection of particles. And the, for each particle, their motion are governed by Newton's law. Okay. Then the second one, we can say that's an electromagnetic uh, magnetic revolution. And uh, where the it's unified, it's a seemingly distinct phenomenon of electricity, magnetism, and the light. Okay. And uh, I will say the, the, the new worldview in this revolution is that uh, uh, we, we discover a, a new kind, new form of a matter. I call that a wave-like matter. So this wave-like uh, wave -like matter is an electromagnetic wave, which causes electromagnetic interaction. And this kind of wave-like matter uh, satisfy very different uh, law. So it's actually satisfy Newton's uh, 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 Maxwell's equation. Then the third revolution, I would say, is a, is a relativity revolution, where unified the space-time and the gravity. And another way to view this revolution is that a, a second a wave-like matter is a form, is a font. Uh, so which is a deformation for space or gravitational wave, okay? Again, this is a second wave-like matter. Uh, again, all based a different equation, which is Einstein's uh, equation. And it's take a hundred years uh, to experimentally uh, confirm this uh, second form of wave-like wave matter. So it's a quite an achievement. The, actually, I would say the biggest revolution is the quantum revolution. It turns out the quantum revolution unified this particle and the wave. So this particle like matter and wave like matter are unified under quantum revolution. And uh, 
So, so we have this, uh, uh, this uh, weird form of matter, which is, uh, uh, is, is not particle, not wave, but uh, it's uh, both particle and uh, both wave. And uh, so it's kind of particle wave like uh, matter. So uh, in essence, in quantum theory, the quantum theory is really a very fundamental revolution. So the one of essence is that the very notion of existence is uh, changed. For example, we can say that spin up is existence, and the spin down is also existence, uh, which can be referred as a, a zero or one bit or in this qubit. However, the quantum physics tell us uh, if uh, spin up, spin down are existence, then their addition must also be an existence. So this up plus down is also exist. So this is really, really uh, weird, but this is really a, a superposition uh, principle, which, is a, which kind of fundamentally change uh, our uh, notion of existence. Okay. And it is a, a, this is a superposition principle, which gave rise to this particle wave uh, duality. And the linear algebra uh, describing this uh, superposition uh, became a mathematical foundation for, for quantum theory. Then as a consequence, maybe I want to say that there's another essence of quantum theory as a, essence of, as a consequence of superposition. You know, we, we used to think, we used to think the information and the matter are two very different things. So information is the attribute of the carried by a matter. But however, the quantum physics tell us that uh, uh, a, a frequency, which is a, a property of information because frequency represents a change. So anything change is a frequency. And uh, so frequency actually is a property of information. But according to quantum physics, the frequency is related to the energy. According to relativity, energy are related to the mass. Both energy and the mass are property of matter. So therefore, just like a Boltzmann constant, which connect temperature to energy, the Planck constant really connect frequency to the matter, uh, to the energy. So it's really, it's really, so Planck constant really connect matter and information. It says that the matter and information are deeply related, or maybe the same thing, you know. So, so I would say this is probably a, a, a deep, uh, uh, message uh, from quantum theory. So we should uh, view uh, matter information as a thing, or there's a unification between matter and information. But this sounds like a, a philosophy, you know, exactly how matter like electron, proton, quarks, or photon arise from uh, a quantum information, how that works. Okay, one way for this to get work is to, to say that the space itself is a quantum information. Or another way to say that more precisely is that the space is a collection of a qubits, or we can say the qubit ocean. So this is kind of like a picture of a space here. And so that the dots are qubits, the white one is a qubit zero and the black one is qubit one. So in the qubit in two states. And this link represents uh, there the qubits may be interacting or entangled. So there's some sense of a neighborhood. Okay. So, uh, so in this picture, the space is a qubits and the qubits is everything. So there's no such thing as a, what is, a, you know, what is a between two qubits? Do we have anything between the qubits? No, qubits is everything. It's a, all we have. So there's nothing between two qubits. Okay, and uh, so uh, uh, so in this uh, in this picture, then then we say that uh, the uh, the elementary the vacuum is like a ground state of the qubit ocean, and the elementary particle are the wave or excitation in this qubit ocean. So that is a, a, a so that is a, a picture to say that uh, uh, how the how everything coming from quantum uh, information. Uh, so, so therefore, the original of the origin of elementary particle it became origin of a wave because of particle wave duality. So we just need to find a, all kind of wave equation describe all kinds of, of particle. And this entanglement between qubits give us a sense of space. For example, whether space have one dimension, two dimensions, three dimension or not, it really depends on the, the entanglement structure of a qubits. Okay. 
So that is uh, uh, the basic uh, uh, function. And uh, so actually this uh, function sounds uh, kind of maybe crazy, but actually it's not crazy at all because uh, there's an experimental test. The space actually is a dynamical media. It's not just some, some empty state. Uh, that's really the Kasman effect. And the Kasman effect already tell us that uh, the space itself is dynamical, dynamical media. So it's a kind of like uh, this qubit ocean. Uh, uh, it's com compatible with the qubit ocean uh, function. However, uh, do we really believe that elementary particle and the fundamental force all come from the ocean of qubits? You know, qubits are really the simplest object in quantum mechanics. There's nothing simpler than that. If you say that the elementary particle have uh, something originate from somewhere, then the qubits is the simplest thing it can originate from. But there's nothing simpler than qubits. But the higher qubits are too simple. You know, our elementary particle and the fundamental force are described by a standard model, which is kind of rich and complex. Uh, for example, the standard model have uh, uh, those properties. You know, the standard model uh, have some input. You have to have an input to build the standard model. So why we have those input? Why those input are necessary? So I call those input to the standard model as a wonder or mystery of the universe. So certainly first we have this identical particle. But however, if identical particle are bosons, then it's easy to use qubit ocean to describe it. For example, we can assume this uh, zero qubits as a, it's a vacuum in the background. Then it's a one qubit, it's a boson uh, moving around. So therefore, if a standard model only contains scalar bosons, then it's easy to see that uh, the qubit ocean can give rise to standard model. But we know that a standard model contains much more than uh, identical boson. It also contains a photon, or another way to say that the wave that satisfies Maxwell equation. It also contains a wave that satisfies Young Mills equation, which is a, a gave rise to strong and weak interaction. And then we have a particle with a Fermi statistics, which is that standard model are described by anti commuting field. You know, why we introduce anti commuting field in standard model? To describe our universe, you know, who ordered that? And uh, those fermions also carry fractional angular momentum, which sounds also strange. And also, we have a parity breaking that is only maybe left hand fermion or maybe right hand fermion coupled to the Young Mills wave. You know? And then we have very accurate Lorentz symmetry. We also have a spin two bosons, which have only two components. You know, spin two should have five components, but this spin to only have two components which represent the gravitons. So those are kind of like a very basic uh, properties and uh, which we, we don't explain where they come from or what is their origin. We just uh, use this as input and to, to build our model. But now we are like to ask where those eight wonder or the eight mystery come from. Uh, do they have an uh, origin from, uh, can, they, can, they, can they come from quantum information? Can, can they come from qubits? So there's another uh, way to rephrase what I just uh, uh, said, which I call the condensed matter uh, view. So we know that uh, 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 a quantum magnet is uh, formed by electron which spin up or spin down electrons. And the electron with a spin can be viewed as qubits. So in some sense, uh, this uh, quantum magnet is a qubit ocean, it's ocean qubits. Just a uh, electron spin going up and down flip. That's like a qubit go from zero to one. So therefore the uh, so quantum magnets is a qubit ocean. Uh, we can also view qubit ocean as a, as a lattice of boson, ga boson gas. You know, uh, the zero qubits can be the you know, empty side and the one qubits can be the occupied side. So, so, so both lattice boson gas and the quantum magnets are something available in our quantum material. So therefore we can ask, uh, because this qubit motion basically is this quantum magnets or lattice boson gas. And uh, so then we can ask whether we can use this uh, uh, quantum magnets or lattice boson gas to simulate a standard model. That is, that's a, another way to put it. Uh, more precisely is that, uh, can we design interaction between those electron spins or the boson gas 
such that the Luan effective theory of this lattice model happened to be the uh, uh, standard model. Uh, Luan effective theory happened to be standard model. At the beginning, it sounds impossible because of, for the boson gas of qubits, that's, I, we only have a scalar bosons. And with only scalar bosons, how do you produce the fermions? How do you produce the gauge field and the young Mills field? If that's possible. OK. So, uh, uh, so that, that's really become a, 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 a very fundamental question. It just seems impossible. And uh, so, so let's anyway, let's to see uh, to see uh, to see this uh, 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 what what is the problem. So let's 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 try some familiar uh, condensed matter system. Uh, for example, let's consider a uh, superfluid. The superfluid is actually is uh, all kind of superposition of those uh, particles. The ground state of superfluid is a uh, is a superposition superposition for all kind of a particle position. Okay. So that's a ground state. Then what is a wave? What is a collective excitation above this ground state, superfluid ground state? Well, very simple. It's just a dense state wave. So some region have a more particle, other region have less particle. This dense wave may propagate, and we get this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, the standard the dense wave uh, wave equation. And we quickly see that, uh, yeah, this dense wave wave equation gave us, indeed gave us a massless particle. But they only give us a massless spin zero bosons. Okay, it's not a light. So therefore, uh, so for, therefore, this kind of condensed matter system cannot produce a wave that is satisfy Maxwell equation. It can produce a wave, but it satisfy a wrong equation. Okay, the, the light have a two transverse mode. You know, not like a one longitudinal mode. Okay. So in our second try, we can assume let's consider uh, another cube is ocean where the cube is a Zero is a background, but the cube is a one from a crystal. Okay, so these black dots are position of a cube is a one. You can see. Okay, and then in this case, uh, uh, this crystal have a two kind of wave. This a longitudinal compression wave, and the transverse a shear wave. Okay, a transverse wave. Okay, so so this something closer. So this kind of wave satisfy a elastic equation. Which is describe a spinless spin one boson with elastic zero and the plus or minus one. It's almost there, but not quite. Photon is something very special. Photon is a spin one boson, but have elastic only plus or minus one. The elastic zero is missing, so we don't have a longitudinal mode. So therefore, this uh, qubit ocean of crystal does not work. Okay, again we get some wave, but uh, a wrong wave equation. So actually, uh, in condensed matter, uh, people study all kind of order. You know, this uh, all kind of symmetry breaking, all kind of order, and uh, it's uh, really frustrating. And uh, we we find all kind of wave equation, but uh, none of them are Maxwell equation. So we couldn't find uh, 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 the media which produce Maxwell equation. So in a sense, we try to find the ether, and uh, we try to say whether certain condensed matter system or quantum spin system uh, behave like an ether. Whose the spin wave satisfy Maxwell equation, but we cannot. So in some sense, we kind of give up. We say that uh, the, 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 the light is fundamental and uh, we, we should not ask where they come from. But however, in, in, in 1980s, and uh, uh, this, uh, we discovered many uh, quantum material like a quantum Hall effect. Also, we discover high T superconductor. So that's a that's a stimulated theorist to study spin uh, liquid. Okay. And those studies reveal that uh, there's a new kind of uh, matter actually. We call it topological quantum matter. So uh, so you can see based on Landau theory, uh, we used to think uh, all different phase of matter are classified by the signature breaking. But in the quantum Hall state and spin liquid states, we have a different state of matter with the same symmetry. So symmetry breaking cannot really characterize them. So that's indicated there's a new kind of matter. So, so I call this a, uh, this a new kind of order called a topologic order because uh, uh, it's not characterized by symmetry, but the characters by characterized by some kind of topological uh, property. Okay. And in the previous uh, search uh, of a quantum matter, which produce, uh, which that's, Produce a Maxwell equation. It's a field search. 
we overlook this topological uh, uh, order. So, uh, so maybe this uh, the appearance of a new kind of matter, new kind of order, may give us a new hope. That's uh, maybe uh, this uh, the media which produce the Maxwell equation uh, can be found uh, in this uh, new kind of uh, material, new kind of uh, order. So, what is this uh, topology order? It's just a name. Uh, it's take uh, quite a while for us to really understand what is the topology order. So microscopically, topology order actually is a, uh, is a, is a, is a pattern in the entanglement on many body entanglement. So we call this uh, entanglement called the Langrange entanglement. So, uh, so one way to view Langrange entanglement is to view this uh, particle have a global dance, you know, the quantum motion are highly correlated have this uh, uh, global uh, dance. Uh, you can see there's a quantum hall dance like a walls. Uh, maybe, so here I will basically talk about string dance. So those, uh, those are qubits, uh, like uh, the qubits one or spin down, uh, they line up, they form a string, okay. And then the ground state is a superposition of a string formed by those uh, qubits, formed by these down qubits, okay. So this we call the uh, string liquid. Uh, more, more generally, the string may branch, so we can get the string net uh, liquid. So those kind of string liquid or string net liquid uh, will have a long range uh, entanglement and will carry a non-trivial uh, topological order. So that represents a, a, a new phase of a matter. So in some sense, uh, this uh, string dance is like a microscopic, uh, a, a microscopic uh, mechanism uh, to, to have a, a topological uh, order. Okay. And uh, so when you have this uh, topological dance, what can we have? Actually, we, we immediately get a, uh, uh, get photon. We get a wave that sets by Maxwell equation. The idea is the following. Uh, so, so here, uh, our ground state is a superposition of uh, strings. But those strings form a loops. There's no end. String have no end, so they all loop liquid of loops. Okay. So that's ground state is a superposition of all kind of loops, all size. The the loop can be very big and wrap around the universe several times. You know this kind of loop liquid just like this. Okay. And then you say what is the excitation? Just like the superfluid, where the collective excitation is the density of a particle. Here, the collective excitation is density of uh, strings. So some region will have a more string, other region have less strings. Okay. Then you immediately find that uh, the string density wave is described by a vector field because uh, when in the region we have a more string, we, 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 so we, we also need to specify the string in which direction. There's a more string in which direction. So actually, a string density is a vector field. Furthermore, this a string density vector field is a divergentless because we already say that the string have a no end. Okay. So therefore, along the string, the string density cannot change because string cannot end. You know, the string density can only change in the direction perpendicular to the uh, string. Okay. So that kind of string density has satisfied this divergentless condition. And then, so now probably I don't need to. Uh, uh, do too much, you probably can guess that uh, the most natural and the simplest wave equation for this divergentless uh, uh, vector field is actually the Maxwell equation. Okay. And uh, so actually, if you do this, uh, some mean field calculation, indeed, you will find the Maxwell equation uh, describing the collective wave in the string liquid. Okay. So therefore, the string density wave is a uh, uh, gave rise to electromagnetic interaction. And so this kind of a, a, a loop, string loop liquid, loop liquid is the ether. Actually, we are looking for that for, for 150 years. You know? So now we can see, we find the ether, which is a string liquid. Okay, but uh, for, the, for the strong and weak interaction, uh, we have a young mills equation, you know, that described a different wave equation, not the Maxwell equation, but the young mills equation. And uh, can we have that? The answer is yes. And uh, what we need to do is that uh, we have to assume a string can have different types, like in this picture, 
we have kind of red, green, and the blue string, the three types of string. And this string can join, follow certain rules, you know. Uh, 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 not every string can join. They have to join following certain rules. So that's called the fusion rule of a string. It turns out that uh, this, uh, the type and the fusion rule of string determine the gauge group. So in fact, actually string type is a representation of the gauge group. And the fusion rule actually is a fusion rule satisfied by the uh, representation of a group. Okay. And so, so therefore this kind of string liquid uh, have a collector mode described by the non-abelian gate theory and satisfy the young mills equation. Okay. So this is a, 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 a so, so, so therefore the string net density wave can, can, can give rise to a strong and weak interaction. But those are just interaction. How about the matter? So we have, we have a lot of matter here, you know, there's a quark and a lepton. We know that the matter actually carry gauge charges. So what is the gauge charge? What is those particle carry gauge charge? It turns out that uh, the particle carry gauge charge is just the end of strings. Remember that uh, the vacuum have a lot of uh, loops. So when you have an open string, the middle part open string are mixed with the closed string background. So it's a kind of invisible. Only the end of string are visible. So therefore the open string do not behave like an extended object but behave like two point object, okay? And these two point object actually uh, is, a, is a gauge charge. And the, and, the, and the interact with the string density wave in the same way as a gauge charge interact with the gauge field. Uh, so therefore these are really just a gauge charge, okay? And, uh, this, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the fusion rule of a string uh, led to the fusion rule of a gauge charge. And the last led to the emergence of conservation law. You know, we know that uh, the charge conservation is actually is a conservation of gauge charge. And, uh, and this conservation is, is emergent conservation because uh, uh, in, the, in the string liquid, we don't have a symmetry. And uh, there's no symmetry, there's no U1 symmetry. And, uh, but we do have a string liquid, we do have this topological excitation appears at the end of string. And this other string have a special fusion rule and this special fusion rule gave rise to the conservation of gate chart. Actually, now there is an opinion that uh, also from super string theory that uh, uh, quantum gravity have a no global symmetry. Okay. So all the global symmetry or so-called global symmetry we see in the, our universe actually is an emergent conservation law appear in this way as a topological extension appear as a fusion rule of end of string. Okay. So, so this, uh, this, uh, this picture uh, kind of consistent uh, with this uh, uh, recent uh, development in, in quantum gravity that uh, the quantum gravity have no global symmetry. Okay, so, so to summarize that uh, the, the string density wave is a gauge field and the end of string gave rise to the gauge charge. So that's what the end of string is uh, this topological extension is what they call the electron and the quark and the lepton and things like that. But then you may ask, well, electron and the quark are fermions. The string are formed by bosons. They're just a qubits. You know, how can a string give rise to fermionic particle? So, so why we have a fermion at all in our universe is, a, again, it's a big mystery. It's just a given, you know, we don't, we don't ask where it come from. But now we want to ask where they come from. And uh, so, so here I want to say that, uh, uh, so actually the, the string, I would send that the electron can be used as the end of string, but the string itself do not contain energy. So therefore string are invisible. But the higher string are not that invisible. Actually all those strings do not carry energy but it carry entanglement or the modify entanglement somehow. So this modification of entanglement or this hair or string attached can make electron, can, can make end of string into a fermion. So sometimes the end of string can be fermions. So I won't really explain why, uh, how that appears, but I just uh, explain what a feature. So we know that uh, 
the one kind of string net liquid, it's a superposition of all kinds of string net configuration with a amplitude O plus one. So in this case, the end of string will be boson. So we don't have fermion here. The end of string is a boson. So gauge charge a boson in this case. For the however, we can have a different uh, superposition. So like we have plus minus one here. Okay. And uh, then we, we, when we have a different superposition, the grounds they are different, the entanglement are different. It turns out this kind of different entanglement will make an string into a fermion. Uh, more specifically, uh, how do you design, how do you assign this plus or minus sign to the string that wave function is falling? We need to project a three dimensional string wave string into 2D. Then into 2D, this it, is a trick, we just project in 2D. Then we have this uh, overpass, underpass, these two configuration. Then we say when the string fluctuated from the left configuration to right configuration, the wave function change sign. So this kind of sign change uh, is the give rise to this plus minus sign. And this kind of assignment of plus minus sign will make another string into a fermion. And this, this works in any dimension, actually. OK. So therefore, uh, so therefore this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, string uh, liquid uh, not only uh, uh, gave rise to the gauge interaction, but also gave rise to Fermi statistics. So in some sense, it's a unification of a gauge interaction and the Fermi statistics. So, so gauge interaction of Fermi statistics uh, in this picture really is a two side of same coin. It just, uh, they all come from the long range entanglement, uh, this topology order. And this particular line entanglement are uh, described by string net uh, liquid. So the string net liquid is just a, a, a way to describe a particular kind of a language entanglement. And that gave rise to a gauge interaction and gave rise to Fermi statistics. Actually, there's a more general uh, entanglement and uh, a wave function, and which you may give you something beyond the gauge group, uh, something beyond the group uh, things, uh, and also, uh, beyond the Fermi statistics. In two dimension, we can have onion. Uh, in three dimension, certainly we don't have onion. But uh, if this picture in two dimension, we can also have a, a fractional uh, statistics. Okay. So, uh, so to summarize that, uh, uh, if using this uh, uh, Cubis ocean and assuming this, uh, the, the Cubis in the Cubis ocean have a particular long range entanglement, described by this uh, string net wave function. Then actually we can reproduce the seven, the first seven of eight mysteries. So identical particle, the wave that satisfies the master equation, wave that satisfies yang mills equation, and the Fermi statistics, and the fractional angular momentum. Actually, the end of string, if it's a fermion, they, they, they naturally have a, a speed one half. And uh, also uh, recently, we also find a, uh, 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 this, uh, this, uh, this quantum mind body system, which can produce a chiral fermion that's only less than the fermion interact with the Young Mills wave. So even chiral fermion uh, can be produced. And one can also have a Lorentz symmetry, but not naturally. Uh, the reason is that uh, you can see in this condensed matter system, we have a many, many mode. Uh, so we can have this, uh, 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 we can have this, uh, 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 Yang Mills equation, Maxwell equation, and we can have the Dirac equation describing end of string and the fermions. But however, the, no, there are no requirement that all those equations have the same speed of light. They can have a different speed, different velocity. So in condensed matter system, it is allowed. And so therefore, uh, we have to fine tune the condensed matter system, fine tune this lattice system, so that uh, all those modes happen to have the same velocity. So it's uh, compatible with the Lorentz symmetry but the Lorentz symmetry do not appear naturally. So, so we do not explain why we have Lorentz Lorentz symmetry in our universe. And also uh, so far, uh, we, we have a difficulty to produce a, a gravitons, but I will come back to this point uh, in a moment. So if you ignore the graviton, so for the standard model, we can claim that uh, at the moment that we have a design uh, uh, for, the, for the interacting quantum uh, system, uh, uh, quantum magnets, uh, such that uh, whose low energy factor theory reproduce a uh, 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 standard model. Okay, and uh, so in this uh, uh, in this picture, and uh, so this uh, uh, the space actually uh, is an ocean of qubits. This, this is the fundamental assumption. 
if this uh, qubits uh, have a special entanglement, basically form a string net liquid, then the fluctuation of string net density will be the photon, the gluon, uh, and the string will be electron, the quark, and etc. And uh, so, so, in, so, so in this new worldview, these uh, qubits and the many body entanglement uh, play a central role. And actually, we have a new mathematics to describe a many body entanglement. It turns out to be a very abstract mathematical theory called the Brady diffusion hierarchy category, which just like a group theory describe a symmetry. The fusion hierarchy category theory describe a many body entanglement. And so, 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 so that, that, that will be a, a kind of mathematical foundation for this many body entanglement. Okay. So how about uh, uh, gravity? You know, can we produce a graviton? Using, again, using this qubits uh, uh, picture, some lattice model. And uh, so here, let's give it a try. Okay. So we can, we can consider rotor model. So we have a three rotor on each side. We have cubic lattice and three rotor on each side. So we call rotor called the XX rotor, YY rotor, ZZ rotor. And we also place a rotor on the squares. So we have a XY rotor, YZ rotor, and a ZX rotor. Okay. So we have a six rotor in different orientation. Okay. And certainly each rotor have its own canonical variable as angle one tune. Okay. So therefore we can write down a, a, a lattice uh, Lagrangian describing this lattice rotor model. And uh, so we have some interaction, complete the Hamiltonian to describe the interaction. So roughly speaking, we can see that in this rotor model have a six mode. We have a six rotor, we also have six mode. And because they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are tensor index, so the, the index under a rotation symmetry, it's not, it's not hard to, to, uh, uh, to convince yourself to see that uh, this uh, rotor uh, is described by a symmetric tensor field in the continuum limit, okay. And the symmetric tensor field have a six mode, just have a six rotor. Uh, in terms of helicity, it have a helicity two, helicity zero, helicity plus minus one, and helicity plus minus two, okay. And then to introduce, to produce gravity, we should somehow get rid of helicity zero and helicity plus minus one and keep only helicity plus minus two. How to do that? There's one way to do that is uh, we can design this uh, Hamiltonian. It's very complicated. Actually, we find a design such that uh, the helicity plus minus two mode have a finite velocity, but other helicity mode have almost a zero velocity. Not only they have a zero velocity, we also design the Hamiltonian so that they have very strong quantum fluctuation. Okay. When they, were, when they have very strong quantum fluctuation, remember those rotor field, those theta field are angular field. If their quantum fluctuation is bigger than two pi, that means uh, the angular momentum are quantized and uh, those modes actually became gapped. So this is the compactness of this uh, scalar field. Uh, because those uh, angular fields are compact, this strong quantum fluctuation really make them gap. So this actually, uh, this can be done. Uh, you know, in this paper, uh, we show that uh, exactly how, they, how to achieve this. So there, therefore, we, 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 we design a lattice rotor model whose low energy, low energy mode is only helicity plus minus two. So it's kind of like a graviton, okay. But however, uh, there, is a, there is a catch. Okay, and uh, actually we have a two lattice model, two ro lattice rotor model. In the first model, it's a, it's a more theoretically uh, controlled. And uh, so, so, so we can have a controlled approximation to obtain the low energy properties. So remember this, uh, this, uh, this uh, graviton is a low energy property. And from the lattice Hamiltonian to derive low energy property, it's a very difficult. Most time we cannot do it. But however, these lattice models are specially designed. So it's kind, it's kind of soluble in certain way, I call it soluble in the semi-classical semi approximation. Okay. So in this design, the lattice Hamiltonian, and we can use a semi-classical approximation and a reliably and the controlled approximation derive their low energy property and show that indeed, 
all other mode are gap and the, uh, there's a helicity plus minus two mode uh, gapless. But they have this soft dispersion, this omega k cube dispersion. And it's very weird. You can say, why omega k cube? You know, why not omega k square? Why not omega k to the fifth power, fourth power? Why not other power? And for those people who are familiar with uh, this Lipschitz gravity, you will see that actually Lipschitz gravity have dispersion relation omega k cube. So essentially what we obtain here is a lattice realization of a Lipschitz gravity. Okay. And so Lipschitz gravity can be put on the lattice. We can have a UV regulation of a Lipschitz gravity. And this is a, a, there's a, there's a fundamental reason why this dispersion relation appears. And we also construct another lattice model because to, to have a, this a linear dispersion relation and also let's say Pala minus two. But unfortunately, in this, in this, this second lattice model, uh, to derive this result, uh, we, we do not have a semi-classical approximation. So therefore, this result is under uncontrolled approximation. So we don't really know whether this result is correct or not. So, but under some uncontrolled approximation, we can get this result, but really we don't know. And uh, so we need a numerical calculation to really show whether it works or not. So this is a big question. It's a three-dimensional quantum lattice model, strongly interacting, and it's almost hopeless to do new marks. And uh, uh, yeah, so this became a, a open question. And I want to say that this rotor model also works uh, 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 to produce uh, photons. Actually, in this case, we just put a rotor on the links. So therefore, those rotors just like a, behave like a vector field. You know, the, the link have a, is like a vector direction. So for the rotor on the link, uh, we, we have a vector field. Again, using a similar idea, we can design, we have a vector field have three mode. We can design the Hamiltonian such that longitudinal mode have a very uh, low energy. And uh, the, the transverse mode have a high energy. And uh, so, uh, so then the longitudinal mode somehow is gapped uh, because the rotor uh, have a, uh, have a uh, angle, is angular variable. Then this way we obtain this uh, rotor model, lattice rotor model, such that the low energy uh, 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 extension are just a trans two transverse mode. So that's really photon mode. So that's how we get a photon from a, a lattice model. So therefore, uh, uh, so therefore nowadays uh, this development in quantum matter, nowadays we know how to design quantum model on the lattice with, to produce a, 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 a photon, Yang Mills equation, uh, uh, that massless fermion, direct fermion, and etc. cetera. So uh, from, from purely a bosonic degree freedom. So uh, we can do that. But however, to produce a linear graviton, uh, we have trouble. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, uh, trouble. Okay, so this is a, uh, uh, so we can see that uh, uh, the standard model uh, can be simulated by the a uh, quantum material or by the quantum magnets, okay. And so actually in condensed matter, there's a very strong uh, activity uh, in experiments, try to looking for those uh, quantum matter with topology order. And uh, with a, say like with a spin wave, let's satisfy Maxwell equation and uh, well, maybe some emerging fermion, emerging anion and etc. So it's a very strong push. And uh, we, there's a lot of candidate material and there's a lot of a sign, uh, those materials have a topology order, have a Maxwell equation. But, uh, but unfortunately at the moment, those material, material qualities is not that perfect. So the interpretation have a room of ambiguity. So we are not completely certain at the moment. So we are still trying uh, uh, in this direction. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, but aside from simulating standard model, we may ask if you can simulate the standard model using qubits, maybe our universe is a qubits ocean. Is a standard model is come from, uh, 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 come from this way. It's coming from qubits, uh, coming from string map. Okay. Then what is the experimental consequence of such assumption? And, uh, and uh, so, uh, so one, uh, one experimental consequence is, uh, is the following probably there's no UV global symmetry, you know, and we don't need that. And uh, 
but this is a little bit philosophical and uh, uh, the, the, the real experimental consequence is falling. The all gauge field are compact. Actually from qubits model, there is, we cannot have emergent non-compact gauge field. The emergent gauge field are all compact. And also the, all the representation of a gauge group are present as, a, as a excitations. So we, we, we cannot have a missing, uh, 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 we cannot have a missing uh, uh, representation. So those are, uh, those are predictions, you know. And uh, uh, relate to these two prediction is that uh, all the composite fermion must carry non-trivial gauge charge. You know, we know that electron carry non-trivial gauge charge of one, two, three, and the uh, quark carry non-trivial gauge charge of one, two, three. But, uh, but some co combination of uh, electron and uh, quarks uh, probably are uh, totally neutral. So therefore the standard model the standard standard model do not satisfy this property. There are some composite fermion carry no gauge charge. And also the SU5 one unified theory do not satisfy this property. So therefore, if you assume the emergence of the standard model from qubit's ocean, that rule out the standard standard model and the SU5 one unified theory. But however, the SU10 one unified theory have these properties. Actually, uh, in, in a few days ago, uh, there's discussion for SO10 and uh, to discuss the different feature actually is related to this. And uh, the, the SO10 will, when the SO10 break down to U1 cross SU cross SU3, until there's additional unbroken uh, Z2 gauge field, uh, which is beyond the standard model. And uh, this Z2 gauge field uh, will give rise to new cosmic string. So therefore this, uh, the cube is uh, uh, ocean uh, picture predict new cosmic string. And any scale is not known. And uh, the experimental bound probably is a uh, 10 to 15, I mean 10 to 10, so there's uh, some bound. So I'm not really familiar with this uh, uh, area. Okay. Another prediction for this is that uh, uh, looks like this 15 uh, wild family, 15 wild fermion per family in standard model, again, it's not compatible with this qubit model. The qubit model prefer 16 wild fermion per family. So it mean, means uh, we have stereo neutrinos. And the mass gap of stereo neutrino may be similar to this uh, string gap. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's a, one possibility. Uh, so therefore those are, uh, those, those are kind of a, a, a beyond the standard model, model favored by, uh, by this qubit uh, ocean picture. So there are some kind of testable uh, uh, consequence of this qubit's uh, ocean uh, picture. Okay. Professor Ren, yeah. before you start, you have five minutes. Okay, yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll finish this. Yeah, this uh, the, the last I want to make a comment. Uh, that is, uh, you know, here we talk, describe, uh, describe uh, the qubit's model, which have emergence of a, uh, a standard model. Somehow this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, emerging the picture or this condensed matter study, for some reason are related to our study of quantum gravity. You know, in recent years, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, there's a, a field in quantum gravity. They talk about, they discuss uh, what kind of effect field theory are compatible with gravity. You know, there's many, many effect field theory, but some of them are incompatible with quantum gravity. It's called a, a swamp plant. A swampness. But some effective field theory is compatible with quantum gravity. It's called a landscape. And we have a similar issue in condensed matter. Again, we can write down many, many effective field theory, which are incompatible with the qubit model. The qubit model on the lattice. You know, qubit model on the lattice can only produce certain kind of effective field theory at the low energy. So that's, we can call that a, a condensed matter landscape. The one which can be the effective field theory, which can be produced by qubit model on the, on the lattice. Okay. And uh, then, then it turns out that uh, the quantum gravity landscape and the condensed matter landscape may be identical. They demand the same set of low energy effective field theory. And uh, for example, this uh, no global symmetry conjecture, the coordinates conjecture, and the completeness conjecture, other completeness conjecture probably is this uh, 
all the present, all representation of gauge group are present. So, so this is a requirement of a effective field theory at the low energy from quantum gravity and the requirement of effective field theory uh, from lattice qubit model appear to be the same. And uh, so it's, a, it's quite amazing. You know, these two, these two branches of physics are developed independently, you know. And at the end, this seems to produce a very similar result. So I don't understand why, 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 why this is true. You know, it's a, I find it's a very amazing. So that's making me to thinking is this quantum gravity a local qubits model, you know, uh, since there's some such coincidence, you know. Uh, so, so, so there's some uh, connection between condensed matter physics and the quantum uh, gravity. So to end, I will say that uh, maybe matter and the space are really quantum information, the gauge interaction from Fermi statistics and the sense of space may all come from the language uh, quantum entanglement. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for this very nice talk, Professor Wen. Uh, we can take some questions. I think there were some questions while you were speaking. Um, one of them was from Kaiser Shafi. If he wants, Professor Shafi, are you there? If you're there, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. I, he may not be here and okay. He did not write his question, so I will be moving on with another one. Uh, there is a question from Nadir Yavuskan. He's asking why topological order has been defined as long range entanglement. Also, why the entanglement in the text has been has not been defined as ranged interaction. Is there any difference? Okay, you know, at the beginning, the topology order is just a name. You know, we realize that uh, there are there are certain phase of matter which are not characterized by symmetry breaking. It's not characterized by the symmetry breaking order parameter. So we need to characterize by something. And uh, so at the beginning, we find this, uh, this uh, robust ground state degeneracy and it's a modular transformation and things like that to characterize this new phase of matter. And we just gave the name topology order. It's just a name. And this name comes from, it's motivated from the, uh, uh, from the uh, uh, realization that uh, the low energy effective theory of this kind of a new phase of matter are strongly related to the topological quantum field theory which was introduced in the same year in 1989. And uh, so, uh, so, so, so therefore I, just a moment. <clears throat> so, so therefore uh, I, I kind of named this, uh, this, uh, this uh, new phase of as topological order because uh, their low energy fat theory is a topological quantum field theory. And so, so that, that's why we call this topology order. Why topology order is related to the quantum entanglement? Uh, we don't know. The, you know, topology order is uh, introduced in 1989. At that time, quantum entanglement is certainly known words, but it's not very popular words. And I don't know the qubits, I don't know when the qubits words was named, maybe after 1989. And, you know, so what, what I try to say that at that time, People not do, people do not think about the quantum information, and uh, so so there's a decoupling from topology order just real as something weird, you know. It's take uh, maybe uh, twenty years, you know. During nineteen nineties, the quantum information kind of uh, take off. Then condensed matter people start to think about the quantum information, try to learn quantum information. Then we start to realize that yeah, this topology order which we define differently. It's directly correspond to a entanglement, and correspond to a particular entanglement called a language entanglement. So after 20 years later, so we formulated a way to use a language entanglement and quantum circuit, this quantum information language to more rigorously define what is a, a topology order. So that's kind of a, a story that the, uh, the topology order is a concept from condensed matter, but uh, later we realized that they have very close tie with the quantum information. And why they have something to do with interaction is as I explained here, 
And uh, when you have a, uh, uh, when you have a, a material with a topology order, you may have a collective excision satisfy Maxwell equation. And that is the electromagnetic interaction. So that's a definition for electromagnetic interaction is that the interaction caused by the collective mode that satisfy Maxwell equation. And uh, so with, uh, with topology order, and uh, we, are able to, we are able to find this kind of a uh, condensed matter system, uh, design the condensed matter system, which, uh, uh, which have a Maxwell equation uh, in it. Thank you, Professor Wen. Uh, I guess we have a question from you, Professor Demish. Please. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I was wondering. I mean, you you have, you have certainly given strong arguments in favor of emergent nature of the light, uh, gravity, matter, spin statistics, etc. But I mean, do you have a uh, do you have a concrete model? For example, do you have uh, Higgs sector of the standard model is a is a concrete model a, 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 as a result of this uh, mechanism. Thank you. Yeah, this is a really good question, and uh, the uh, the simple answer is no. And uh, because I, I study condensed matter, not particle physics, so uh, to really study Higgs sector, you really need to know the details, all these details of particle physics, which I don't have. But I wish I I I can ha I can do it. But okay, that's maybe about, uh, that, that's sorry. maybe too wide. But the, the uh, point. I'm let me put it. Let me put it this way. Uh, in Higgs model, uh, there are some constraints on Higgs model because Higgs field is a is a bosonic field. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, 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 for example, the bosonic field uh, should not be in the spinner representation of SU two. You know, the spinner representation of SU two probably has to be a uh, fermion. So there are some constraints. So in in a sense. Uh, uh, I believe that uh, the uh, if you believe standard model emerge from this cubic ocean, then there are some constraint on what kind of Higgs field we can put in so that uh, all the composite fermion must carry gauge charge. This mm -hmm. can put a constraint on the Higgs sector. Certain Higgs uh, representation is not allowed because that makes certain fermion gauge neutral and also fermion. And, uh, and I did not study in this direction, but I believe there is a constraint uh, in this. Okay. And maybe okay. this constraint is so mm -hmm. severe that uh, they rule out this picture because uh, it look, looks like uh, we have pretty good knowledge what the Higgs sector should be. And maybe Higgs sector already killed this idea. So this is this, the, the, the picture I present here is a falsifiable. It's actually, especially by your question, it's a Higgs sector may not work. You know, I did not okay. study this, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Very, very good question. And I wish I can really study this. Thank direction. you. Yeah. Thank you for the answer. Thank you. We have a few more minutes for an additional question. But if there is none, uh, thank you for this very nice talk, Professor Wen. Thank you. Oh, uh, there, there, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. There is, a, there is another question, apparently, from Sharam Jalalzadeh. If you can unmute you. We can take your question. Um. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor Wayne, for your good representation. I had a question about the time, nature of time here. Uh, you started with uh, space, that space in your tour is the uh, ocean of uh, qubits. What about time? Uh, could you please give a bit of information about the time? <laughs> yeah. And uh, thanks. You know, uh, again, I have to say that uh, I wear the hat of condensed matter physics, which means uh, it's, a for, it's a forbidden for me to study time. So then that, because that's not the condensed matter. You know, and as long as I study Hamiltonian, I can still claim I'm, I'm doing condensed matter physics. And uh, but that's a certain uh, joke. And uh, the time, certainly, you know. What I really try to say is that uh, the presentation I have here are really based on the Hamiltonian formulation and based on quantum physics. Okay. In quantum physics, the time is absolute. Okay. So therefore, if you want to study times, I need to abandon quantum physics. And uh, then I don't know where, to, where do I start, you know. You know, here I try to push quantum physics to the extreme. We find we can have uh, everything in standard model emerge from qubits within the framework of, framework of quantum physics. 
And maybe it's okay, it's maybe it's right we have trouble in gravity because gravity may involve time because in quantum relativity tells us the time is also dynamical, just like a space. So, and also Lorentz symmetry, we have trouble to produce Lorentz symmetry also have same reason. We treat the time as an absolute time. So therefore we have no natural interpretation of Lorentz symmetry. We need to treat the space and time at equal footing to have a natural uh, explanation of the Lorentz symmetry and maybe to have a natural uh, uh, a theory for gravity. But, uh, but because I'm limited to work within quantum theory with the uh, absolute time, with the Herbert space, with Hamiltonian, so I have no answer uh, to time. But my, my, my comment is really that any study of a time as dynamic variable need to abandon quantum physics. And so that means uh, we need to formulate a new theory where time is not absolute. And, uh, and uh, at the moment, uh, we don't have any clue how to abandon quantum physics. And uh, so, so this became a rather difficult uh, uh, issue, yeah. Thank you for your answer, Professor Ren. Um, are there any other questions? Let me ask so that I don't skip any other questions.